Welcome to the Effects Loop. I'm Diaz. And I'm Chris. And we're keeping you in the loop of the guitar community. All right, this week's episode is brought to you by all of our loving Patreon pa- Patreon supporters, patrons from the Patreon. Patreon somethings. Be- Bed, Bath, and Patreon. I don't know. Speaking of Bed, Bath, and Beyond, did you see the new Spider Man trailer? No. Oh my gosh, dude. <laughs> oh. So, all, right, all right, all right, hold on. This is a shout out to. Once again, shout out to all of our Patreon supporters. Go to page patreon.com slash the effects loop and you can get a shout out to like say hi everybody. Um, but anywho, yeah, no, uh new Spider-Man dude, like so it, they're going into the multiverse. And I don't know if you've like really checked out the MCU multiverse Not and everything that's much. going on there. Um, so one of the things that's really cool about the multiverse is it makes almost every movie that was done before that sucked still kind of canon because they're just different universes of the same right. thing huh. so like that's a big thing with like dr strange and all that like but they apparently um they've got they previewed uh dr ock and hinted towards the green goblin in this Okay, I was wondering why I saw a green goblin meme today. I was like, "That's well," and it, they dated. used they used Willem Dafoe's laugh and the guy who played Doctor Ock in the uh, in Spider Man Two. I had his name and I totally forgot it. Yeah, I know um, what you're talking about though. Uh, hold on, hold on, dang it! It's gonna bug me. I can't do it. So while you uh, look that up this week, no, it's not Kato Kalen. Is uh, Alfred Molina? We don't have our sponsors. We are don't. patrons. What? No, it's our yeah. Shh. Got you. Okay. We don't want to bring bring attention to it or anything. Let's let's dedicate <laughs> the next five minutes talking about it. Um. Anywho, yeah, this episode is brought to you by Spider Man. <laughs> this Spider-Man. is how we all bought a very limited edition gibsons yeah um all right so uh, what's so what's new with you uh, in, your, in your gear world i've actually gotten quite a bit i picked up a matthews effects astronomer uh version 1.5 um okay i picked that up from east side music um and oh, you were in have... nashville or did you get it online no i got it online uh, oh, okay. they were the only one that had it and I, i've gone i went through like five different sellers trying to get a decent deal on one and yeah. they were the only one that actually like worked with me on like cutting me a little bit of a deal and did refunding you go to the shipping matthews effect? did you go to the matthews effect they are s- oh yeah i did but i was oh, trying okay. to get a limited edition one oh, okay. uh, out of them because the couple of people that had them up on reverb were super like not really willing to super negotiate or like after two tries it kind of oh, like, it's like the person died off it up, is it like the person <laughs> put up for like 160 dollars and they're like they still leave the make an offer and you're like hey 155 they're like no kind of got you put that. make it why'd you put make an offer then you yeah because they like, even like oh, tried yeah, to yeah. go back after a offer like went away and was like hey i'll go five bucks above what you like your lowest offer you gave and i heard nothing so i'm like okay i'll go give my couple hundred bucks to somebody else yeah so note to all of you on reverb try to actually negotiate yeah yeah suck it um what else sorry i I don't know i I was getting very (laughs) i was getting very aggressive on reverb sellers right there all right what else did you get uh the simplifier but i don't remember who the name the brand is because it's like uh, a, uh, an acronym Dumbolt. and hsm yes. dumble yes i picked up the simplifier from them i got it used also um well still uh, waiting you can for find it here for, you can find those a pretty good price how much did you pay for yours uh one no oh 260 Okay, I was gonna say because I saw one on Reverb for like two fifty, and I was like, if you got, I was about to say if you got it for like less than two hundred, like dude, that's a heck of a score. Um, yeah, I think I I went like twenty bucks under, 
asking and it was the guy that had the lowest on reverb at the time so i'm just waiting for it to actually show up he was just selling that to buy the dlx probably <laughs> which i i, I didn't want to like fully commit to that until i gave it a shot because i figure it's like if i don't like this i'm going to be going through three or four different amp sims before i find one so. right well like it was really crazy for me because i was like uh i've been wanting one pretty bad i don't know i'm i'm in it i'm like trying really hard to figure out an ampless situation and i i had the iridium i enjoyed it i didn't think it was like f amazing mm -hmm. um I mean, it was great. It was solid. Uh, I had the Geneva. That sounded really good, but I wanted more options. Um, and I'm, I'm trying to, like, I wish they had a Kemper in the, like, stomp size. Oh, yeah. Um, but, yeah, like, I haven't been able to decide. I'm, I'm thinking about going with the Simplifier DLX, but I'm not sure. I do like yeah. that it's all black, too. I almost did the Geneva, but I, too, wanted other options instead of like just a vox amp because i currently have a little like miniature you bounce between, head, but... you bounce between vox and marshall a lot don't mm -hmm. you yeah so like you do you're like even just something generic like you and then like marshall for rock stuff exactly yeah so but i've also gotten to the point of like the sound i'm kind of really shooting for is a like Vox amp with some kind of like Marshall in a box pushing it. Cause I played a couple of years back, the JHS you... blues driver thing they did with boss. Yeah, the angry boss. Box. Yeah. And that like that did it for me. So I kind of want to pick right. up one of those at some point, but if I'm going to yeah. do Marshall in a box, I really want the filaments. I don't think from, I've heard of that one from uh Keely Keely filaments. Okay. Kind of like it's kind of like a high gain Marshall thing, like not not like not like super high gain, but like in one of the videos, the guy played Pearl Jam, and I was like, oh, mm. you know, like because nice. when I like I mean, there's like Pearl Jam's like that, just a Strat and a Les Paul. I'm pretty sure they both go straight into Marshalls, if I'm correct. It's very possible. Be. Um, but yeah, like oh, it's such a great sound. I, I love when it comes to like overdrive and stuff like a blue like our uh, um blues breaker is one of my favorite which it has a um it's not like the marshall lead sound but it is mm -hmm. a marshall in a box for the most part and technically uh, <clears throat> yes <laughs> technically it's a different style of marshall but it still is in that family yeah it's not the one everybody wants except it is what everybody wants and they just don't realize it yet yep <laughs> that, that's uh, the whole thing so oh that reminds me it's my time hold on I got to check. Tell us what else you got new because I'm going to check the King uh, of Tone list because every time I think about a blues breaker, I have to go look. Uh, I think that's it. I oh. unpacked a couple of uh, boxes that have been in storage for at least two years that had a bunch of extra pedals and stuff in it. So I just kind of been pulling them out. It's mostly utility yeah. pedals. So I've been kind of rearranging my board, making sure everything can fit mm -hmm. and get wired up. So, yeah. Yeah, the joys of I'm, moving. <laughs> I I, th I think I've finally decided on the size board I'm gonna get. I might do the like Trio Forty Three Temple Audio. Is that's that the, that's the huge? So that's mother bigger ever. than the PT Pro size. I think it is. Oh well. Like I want to go. I want to go just huge, and I want I want spaceships again. Yeah. <laughs> Like, well, yeah, that's what I'm the... thinking too. I'm just like, I want to get a whammy again. I want to just get like the individual, right? Right. Like, I want, I want models and just go, like, just keep it simple. I'm thinking of putting the MM4 on my board. I plugged that in this week for the first time. That would be a good one. Yeah, I was almost very tempted to pick up an old um, M series line six. Yeah, the MM4 to kind of just be everything. I'm I'm thinking about putting it on there. The chorus vibrato on it is phenomenal. But yeah. Hmm. Um let's uh transition into our gear news. Speaking of line six, this so company nothing new with you. Oh no, no, nothing. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Um 
I was trying not to point that out, but okay. Uh, thanks, Chris, again. <laughs> You're <taking> welcome. <laughs> Let's make everything awkward. All right, so Strymon, which is made up of X Line 6 employees, how oh, I tied that in, uh, confirms the new Zelza, a purple multi dimensional phaser. And people are disappointed. You know what I say to those people? Who's Strymon? <laughs> Strymon? Strymon? Who? Who? No, but they have a phaser now, and it's purple. I'm excited. I, I guess that's cool. It's freaking awesome. You got a four stage and a six stage on there. Like you've got, like so, I honestly. So what so did my the stages do for me? Tell me that. I don't know. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I think it's just how many steps, pretty much. I guess. Like kind sense. of like the. The. Uh, oh, like the wave. Yeah. Is that what I'm thinking of? Maybe. Wave pattern. Yeah, could be. Okay. I don't know. Do I look like Scott. <laughs> the one week he leaves us on our own remember, remember I'm the guy who likes to play the pedals I'm not the guy that likes to know about the pedals Oof. I like to just twist knobs and make sounds <laughs> I am very I'm very happy to be that guitar player um, but uh, because I'm pretty good at making sounds uh, so I stand behind that um, it, it's really interesting it's got uh, MIDI and that's really cool that on their like quote unquote single style diamonds is the first one that does that right i don't know i believe no well i think it is um, no the the um i swear that the uh, uh what's the thing i was just talking about getting rid of the iridium has midi oh huh. i'm pretty sure yeah to look at it yes 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 you can set it to midi oh nice okay so so yeah that's it's not the first one but it is really cool that they're making that a staple on there um you can use USB C to run the midi as well um yeah that would be a nice feature on their older ones cool thing about the phaser is it is stereo um and you can also change the input from mono to stereo so you can do a mono input this is a good spot to split your uh, signal path or if you want to already have it in your stereo you can uh, use a TRS to and uh, split it out and you know run it stereo the whole way so that's really cool very nice uh, they also released a conduit MIDI hub along with this today oh I did not see that I was distracted by the phaser yeah, so they, they snuck that in, I guess. Or if it's not super new, it's the first time I'm seeing about it. So, What kind of mini hub are you talking about? You're using... I'm on their actual website. You want no. the multi-switch? No, it's literally like 5-pin MIDI in and out with the USB. Oh, the um, conduit. I, I see it. Yeah. Uh, I, I'm pretty sure they released this before, but... Yeah, I don't think this was released super recent. I mean, I, I, mean, I know it was recent. I'll gotcha. this today as well. I just noticed right. the USB port for the MIDI stuff. I'm like, oh, that might be why. Yeah. Um, it's three hundred fifty dollars, cool. which is very expensive for a phaser, I'll say that. But it is a Strymon pedal and um just running with the what they charge and what they put into these pedals, that's you know, that's standard price for it. Mm. Um so that's pretty cool. Uh, speaking of a not standard price, we're gonna move on to Gibson debuting the Jerry Cantrell Wino Les Paul custom. With Ooh, Murphy Lab aging, Ooh, you don't fucking want to. Um, because Gibson's out of their gosh damn minds. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Um, so uh, there's two different price points. Um, for the one that Jerry did not sign, it's $9,000. For a plain and, maple top and mahogany body. And um from what i let's see aged and signed there's gonna be a hundred that are like aged and signed i believe or a few um i'm i'm trying to think oh, where's it at aged and signed i don't know it's, it's i think the aged and signed one that one might be nine thousand dollars on top of the other nine thousand, or like only a thousand. Wait, how much was? No, this? it isn't. It's nine thousand dollars for the signed one. Sorry. Wait, is there only? Is there two, or is there just one? I don't know. All right, I think there's just one. It's nine thousand dollars. Huh. Okay. 
I don't know. I was getting confused by people making comments. Um, yeah. For that so. price, it should be signed. <laughs> $9,000. I mean, for that, he should have ran his balls across. <laughs> oh, no. There, there better be DNA <laughs> on, that, on that son of a bitch when I get it. Uh... Like, I better be able to make a clone. Like, that's what I'm talking about. Because that's $9,000. <laughs> that's ridiculous there's i mean uh it makes me kind of sick all right <laughs> things that don't make me sick is this next pedal old blood noise endeavors who uh this podcast loves came out with a sun sunlight dynamic reverb and it's not your regular reverb nope. why don't you tell us about it chris um i listened to the demo it sounded pretty fun um the demo they put out was very uh shoegazy i guess would be the style but that's kind of their niche anyway i believe is that group of people oh yeah they're they're definitely not like going for the p-dubs crowd no not at all so um um if you are friends with robert Keeley and have his pepper grinder you will love this because um, you don't have to be on drugs to enjoy this pedal, but it sure helps. Yeah. Uh, one of their, one of the little things that stick out to me is the freeze reverb. Is this a button? Is this a mode? I don't, can't tell. But it freezes the reverb trails when you stop playing, allowing you to get some pretty unique effects, as they say. So yeah, this is crazy. It's kind of like a, a ramp that's on a reverb. <laughs> Yes. Random step filtering, like stacked resonant delays, wobble, vibrato, like all this. This is a lot packed into a small pedal. I mean, this is insane. But they, but Old Blood makes pedals that are not your typical. Mm -mm. And that's why they stand out. It's only um, 250, which is not too bad, I don't think. Oh, not too bad at all for a good reverb. Um, so th this next thing is very interesting. I right, so I saw I saw this and I had to put it on there. Um, we are just tearing through these, aren't we? Yeah. All right. Well, good Still. thing that. Yeah, and well, good thing that we've got like lists that have been <laughs> And everyone knows my love for lists. If you have not listened to this episode, this podcast before, I love lists. Like, fantastic. All right, so Error Instruments has the Lucifer. It is a drone oscillator, and it is a Euro rack. Um, this thing's weird, and I like. Oh it. yeah. Like, and I, what was this like? I want this in a pedal. I do too. Like, we need more of these that aren't. Like, I want to run this in front. Random of... people on reverb. I want to run this in front of a whammy pedal. Ooh. Like, this makes me feel things in a lot of different ways. And I love it. Yeah, I listen to this. It's pretty cool, too. I mean, I think this is, I want this in a pedal so bad. Yeah. Neither one of us know much about Euro Rack, so if you were wanting more information about it, it'll be in the show notes. Yes, because Chris is going to do that. Yes. Just throwing that out there. He volunteered himself on this one. All right. Um, I don't think we've talked about this before. Uh, Fender reissues the new limited edition made in Japan, Supersonic. Uh, they're ugly. They look Are they like, always reversed? I don't know, but they look like someone with cockeyed, like or a cockeyed person or a whatever you'd call, I don't know. It looks like I, I really just want to. Oh, wait, the blue comes in sparkle of, of Steve Buscemi saying everything looks okay to me from yes. Mr. Deeds. That's how I feel <laughs> right now. <laughs> like, oh, I don't like it. I wouldn't like this. Like is like, no, this is just not make me upset Fender japan has a lot of cool stuff on their website i don't like this that's why they're only releasing it in japan thank heavens <laughs> i think they're i don't know i do like the blue finish though 
We need more sparkles from actual Fender because I think the only... What is the price range on this? I don't know. I looked no, it up. One, Hold on. No. no, I did not. That was the other one I looked up. But yeah, it, it's... Uh, $200. It's a... This looks like a first act guitar. Interesting. Like, it really... That's what... I think that's what it does. This looks like a freaking Walmart guitar. Like, where you look at it, and you're like, yeah, that kind of looks like a guitar. So, so interesting. So does that mean the Fender Japans are basically... It's, what? Don't, $200, don't, you're sure? That's No, th no. I was saying that's all it's worth to me. Oh. <laughs> no, no, no. This is going to be like... like it's going to be like... Four, it's going to be like $1,400. Possibly. 1600 I don't know. 1400 1200 something like that um yeah it's i don't like it i don't want to talk about it anymore it's making me upset <laughs> <laughs> it's, 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 i just brought a downer onto my day um well, all right so then... we're, we'll just move on i don't want to talk about it anymore yeah go go talk about the uh univibes because yeah so um they've got the univibe uh so there's what's the name of this company i can't see it uh sabadius sabadius electronics sure. um they're uh they got two univibes a 68 the tiny vibe 68 and a tiny vibe 69 so apparently i didn't know this there's a really big difference between the production of univibes between 1968 and 1969 um they were manufactured in different uh countries i mean like um huh. So the 68 is based on the Honeybelt Univibe from 68. And um, the 69 on their hand is an emulation of the later Japanese built Univibe, known for its warmer and much wider sound. So uh, this is really cool. Each of these pedals is built using a custom made photo cell and Matashita ch transistors. They're, um, it's a completely analog circuit, just like the original thing. So this is really cool. Uh, because one of the things that they're talking about is so these are based around artists um the 68 is the Jimi hendrix sound univibe and the 69 is the robin trower and david gilmore sound univibe uh if you don't have a univibe they're a lot of fun anything kind of like that i mean uh i know travis feaster from uh chasing tone that was a pedal that he absolutely loves is the univibe I, th I think you can get a really cool sound with it. I, th I, th I think a lot of people hear it and don't realize that's what they're hearing. And then you start playing with it. You're like, oh I my gosh, that. that sounds fantastic. But, oh, yeah. I didn't see how much these were running. The price uh, would be helpful. It says to be... <laughs> to be determined. Uh, it says TBC, so yeah, we'll go with that. Uh, but the cool little thing about these is the speed knob is off to the side. So you yeah, can, you can use your, your foot, foot to roll. Yeah. Yeah. Which is that's good. really neat. Wait, weren't I mean, weren't the original Univibes like an actual like whammy enclosure or am I completely off on that? Or are they just I mean, long enclosures? Uh they there were um a lot of Univibes had uh expression. Okay. And you'd use like an expression. I think I think uh, there was a lot of yeah, yeah, they had um their own little foot switch or uh foot pedal that came with it so, yeah that makes sense then um uh, so we're gonna talk about this just because it's like uh i think it's really neat uh roads been teasing a comeback which I, I, will, so I, will, bad. I, I will say this this shocks me i don't really see it yeah it really does um because while a lot of people say well the roads sound is sought after mm -hmm. there's a lot of things already doing that sound very well and um when you think of like the nord system and nord keyboards like that's top of the line i don't see these coming back and being affordable enough for people to want to buy uh, i could see that because what are because they, they're going to be one trick tone for now Oh, I'm sure the Rhodes price is all over the place. It, I, I, big thing about Rhodes is it really depends on the the condition, and it varies so mm -hmm. widely with condition. 
It was on Reverb, in, no, eBay. Uh, $3,000 is the first one that I see that was actually not a part. So I think, uh, I, I know I was joking about it in our group chat. So if you want to be a part of that, uh, join our Patreon group. Patreon.com slash the FX loop. Um, I was like halfway joking that these are probably going to be like $5,000, but that's probably honestly where they're going to be, which is kind of sad for those of us that would really love to own a Rhodes, but at the same time, we don't want to go through the maintenance of owning, owning an original <laughs> right. from the like 70s and 80s. So. Right. Did they have Rhodes in the 60s? Uh, I th maybe. Maybe. I don't know how far back they go. I'm Googling it. Okay. But is it, this is just one of those fun things for me is that there's like, what, five knobs or some something on it and comes with its own cab. Like, that's right. that's fun to me. Whereas, like, the you're talking about the Nords. It still has too many buttons and stuff that just, I don't know, that that, that turns me off to it. I want a nice, simple electric keyboard. So Rhodes has been around for a while, actually. Um, Rhodes actually attempted... I don't think they started off as an instrument company. Interesting. Or maybe they're talking about the guy, Rhodes. He attempted to manufacture... It says Rhodes, Rhodeses, which I'm assuming that might be the gentleman, Harold Rhodes. Um, attempted yes. to manufacture pianos while teaching recovering soldiers during World War II. So 50, in 59, Fender began marketing the piano bass. And let's see. Oh, they joined Fender in 59? Yeah, I don't know. It seemed, there's not a good history of this, and I don't think it's a good time to learn on the podcast. <laughs> um, but anywho, I don't think it's going to... I think it's... <sighs> it's it's going to be too high, in my opinion. Yeah, unless they're going to... Yeah, they're just... They're, they can't do the one trick pony and sell it for thirty five hundred dollars mm -mm. um it's not going to be able to work because then you can just be like i'll go buy a, a nord and have yeah. a great sound and other great sounds i mean Even that's one around a thousand for a one trick pony i think i can maybe live with that <laughs> yeah this is but also you know, well here i mean i'm not in that world of, of a keyboard player and how they collect things and 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 stuff like that so i can't give a fair judgment i know a lot of keyboard players like having a lot of different keyboards but yeah i don't know it depends on how they sell it That's so true. we'll see what happens um yeah. since we're already talking about like fender related companies fender japan again this makes an ugly ass guitar um so daiki dakai sonetta i don't know um who is that by the way is my question i think he's from a japanese like metal band or something like that maybe uh um, i'm not sure I burn, no, it's the website music group king gnu okay not a band that i would say i listen to on the regular oh he's younger than us and already has a fender signature Ugh. well you know the good thing about <laughs> having a podcast is being able to shit on other people's stuff <laughs> that's fair. while not actually doing something with my own life uh... okay i learned this from people like alex jones uh, <laughs> no, just, I'm sorry. <laughs> all right uh, um, that was my jab of the day to someone who will never hear this and is also i'm not a blip in their life um so all right so they've got the signature guitar uh, they remodeled the swinger guitar um which i don't know why uh it's got the pointy starcaster headstock like not the starcaster that we all know and love but like the like off-brand crappy starcaster thing yeah uh, i th it's got think this was also used on some um offenders metal guitars in the yeah. 80s and 90s yeah ugly guitars um i don't know what this is i don't like it it makes me uncomfortable again fender japan <laughs> needs to stop i don't hate this maybe it's just because it has p90s on it like uh so it's du dual p90s and a 
what is this butterscotch technically or a blonde in general um show me yeah. your genitals <laughs> show me your genitals sorry um you, said, oh, no. you know that video right no and it's a guy who I plays to. the guy who plays taco in the league never seen that either oh my gosh all right anywho um how much is this guitar does is uh, 1500 ish uh okay yeah i mean if you're wanting a unique i think this is one of the better unique ones that they've done in the last few years like they've tried to do yeah. some weird stuff but this one feels more normal and natural no don't install updates no <laughs> so if we lose Sorry. you we know why yeah <laughs> i messed up that's what happened all right um okay so i'm actually kind of excited no not i won't say excited i'm pleasantly thrilled with this next <laughs> okay um so head rush announces the mx5 it's a new compact modeling rig with a four inch color display um this thing is pretty little pretty neat um it is pretty much like the pod go for the head rush family um I, you know, the thing about head rush is it's always been about the sound quality. The mm-hmm. UI is one of the best user interfaces, um, except for I don't like that the pedals like they look, it just looks cheap. Yeah, the, as I'm looking at this and it's really screaming like the uh, movers we've looked at in the past. Right. Like I, I, before I even read this or read a brand name, that's exactly what I thought it was. So there's a thing that I don't like and that's whenever the um whenever you're, you're doing like a digital like user interface and they do the pedal and it has a non good pedal look it just looks like a red square with words written on it that's what this has i don't like it yeah but it's like it, little miniature pedals inside of your pedal right so i don't know so you think uh, everybody should do the line six thing and just give you colored blocks? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> uh, um, one of our uh, friends of the show put out a... Uh... Shoot, where, where was my mind going? Where We have friends? We have friends. Um, all right, so the price on this is in about 550 to 600 depending on how the conversion happens. So, um, yeah. What, what's the price of a pod go these days? pod go i don't know about that around 500 as well maybe 600 about well, it's yeah. in the same price 500 right? yeah so so we're sitting around the same price point um i think line six has the sound quality beat on them so i don't know i want to mess with the pod go i've thought about getting one of those as well but my eyeballs are bigger than my wallet <laughs> uh, i have to think about a lot of things all right so um this looks good. Five out of seven. Great job. Uh, <laughs> this next thing I brought on here because I wanted us to discuss it. Um, so Mackie, mm-hmm. pretty pretty well known. Just a little bit. Company. People have heard of them. Um, they're coming out with these like element series of things. Um, but. So this is a wireless mic system for video creators and streamers. Only video creators and streamers, okay? No so one else. Don't get crazy with it. Um, so I'm guessing this is like uh, you can do wireless to your um, on pretty much any mic. Uh, yeah. Um, that's that's the point of these is you're able to have receivers. Um, one looks like it's a quarter no eighth inch in and then the other is an xlr you just plug it into the bottom of your microphone um you know any standard like 57 58 and i don't know if this has a second piece that hooks up to your phone or something this is if you want to do billy on the street yeah like and you don't want to i mean you could use this on uh your camera i mean Mm -hmm. most cameras have an aux in um or if you're using a wireless uh, or like a portable recorder, like the uh, Tascam, star, well, the, the Zoom H6, H5, H4, 
Yeah, this so one this, in one. this lets you uh, not have to have that giant interface to right. go into your camera or your phone. So these are really nice. Uh, I think uh, the website says they're about, about two hundred dollars. Yeah, which is seventy, about 70... Bucks less than the road setup for like that's comparable. And I think Sennheiser right. also has something similar to this. Oh, I'm sure. Um. But yeah, I think this is probably the most budget friendly one because I've looked at getting these for us for Nam, and they've always been so expensive. So this would be been, really cool. Yeah, like these have been going down in price, and we might pick one of these up for that. That would be great. But but what if we want to do two mics? Now you're just getting too crazy. Insanity. Um, <laughs> let's see. What is next? Was that the last thing on the list? Nope. Oh, there's other things. Yeah, we got um, your uh, Tony Lamoni. Tony Tony Iomi. Um, so when we were doing the pre-app, my blood pressure went up a little bit because someone on this podcast, I'm not going to say any names, but it wasn't me. Um, whenever they said, they said, who? We're talking about Tony Iomi. Chris? Scott does not know anybody in the music industry. Yeah, that's who it was. <laughs> I'm talking about on this podcast currently right now. <laughs> um, yeah. So Chris apparently just like doesn't recognize Tony Iommi as being like, I don't know, like a guitar legend, maybe. I, he's a guitar yeah. God. I, he I, is I a just... guitar God. He invented an entire like genre. So is he like one of the original members of Black Sabbath or he is like, th- yeah, a guy. Yeah, he's like got you. Okay. So, so there was Geezer Butler, Bill Ward, Tony Iommi, and Ozzy Osbourne. That's the original Black Sabbath. Got you. Caught up now. Okay, because I did not know the original lineup. That's why. Uh, that's the only lineup that matters. <laughs> like seriously, fuck the rest of them. This was like that is Black Sabbath. The rest is just Black Sabbath cover bands, in my opinion. I stand by that. I don't care what anyone says. But, I mean, Tony Iommi, like he invented this sound. Like he mm-hmm. was, he was one of the first like metal guys that was like doing a lot of multi-track. Like, like look at Paranoid. Like, yeah. I mean, they were, they were doing stuff in music that people weren't doing tritones uh, or like the, what is it? The diminished tritone, like the satanic sound, the down, down, down. Like yeah, they, I know what you're talking about. Yeah. Right. I don't know what that's called, but Maybe a diminished tritone. Scott will probably message us in a little bit and be like, you idiot. <laughs> it's a Pythagorean theorem seven. Oh my gosh. Yeah. But anywho, yeah, no, um, I think it's really cool. He has plenty of signatures. Um, this is really cool because in the signature Tony Iommi world, usually they have like the crosses on the SG for the inlays, like the uh, Celtic crosses, I think is mm-hmm. what they're called. Um, yeah, this there. has dots. This is something that can translate to anyone can really have it. Uh, it's a SG with P90s in it, which I, I play an SG with P90s. Would you? Yeah. For a little bit. Please. <laughs> um, before I swap them out for like some P90s that are made to sound like the humbuckers. Uh, or strettos. Um, But yeah, no, this is really cool. I did. Did you see a price on this? I didn't look at a price. Because uh, I I was already upset with Jerry Cantrell's price, I figured this one, especially having dot inlays, shouldn't be that much. Um, Three thousand, so not too bad, I guess for a, no. a for yeah ooh, for a artist series. Is this custom shop right? Yeah, no. I don't see. No, it's yeah, not. I don't think... It's the USA model, so yeah, three thousand. I guess not bad. They they did this guitar in twenty twenty um which is this this is based off his monkey guitar uh it's 1964 sg um that has been reworked and everything this is just a lot nicer Uh, they didn't i didn't see a price on it but it's really cool i think it's neat um and so i always like whenever they do uh signature guitars at a decent price Mm mm-hmm and also a guitar that is willing to cross the genres, in my opinion. It's not just for Tony Iommi fans. It's really for anyone who likes SGs and P90s. It's for you. Yeah. 
if you like the SGs. All right. Anywho, so the last thing we're going to talk about before we go into our list of lists. Um, I don't know if we talked about this last week. I was not there. You weren't here, and I can't remember. Um, this was listed on the website about a week ago. Um, okay. So PRS has a has the sculpture sculpt yeah sculpture custom twenty four. It's the lightest custom twenty four ever, coming in at three point nine pounds. Um, it has no knobs, a piezo, and uh, it looks like it has acoustic strings on it. Yeah, but isn't just the hardware alone almost three pounds? Chris, did you go to an airfield? <laughs> no. <laughs> you went from like, it was like pure silence. What's more concerning <laughs> is there is no airfield yeah. that I know of close by. It's the Russians. I saw this oh, on Red Dawn. Where's Kurt? <laughs> where's, where's, uh, where's, oh shit. Where's Patrick? Best Swayze documentary ever. Yes. Um, <laughs> this guitar is, there's a lot of people get, like getting pissy about it. And I thought it was hilarious because I'm pretty sure they were interviewing Paul Reed Smith. And like, so this is like a $13,500 guitar. Um, this is like one that like Paul slept with. So like, you've got all Dude. that. Um, but it's interesting because like people were like, there's no knobs. And Paul was just like, use all those freaking guitar pedals that you guys love so much. <laughs> Damn. That was like literally the shade that was thrown towards it. Uh, but this is really, I mean, <clears throat> I don't know. I don't touch knobs that much when I play. I don't know. I'm not a knob twirler. I I'll, I'll mess with. I I don't. I don't touch tone controls. I'm really weird about that too. Yeah. I uh, in all honesty, I don't do it much either. Like I'll back. I found myself backing off of like pick and going pick to finger right. if I need. Less. Right. So. Right. I I've, I've been using. I've been doing <laughs> dynamics with my right hand instead of with the knobs. Tone is in the fingers. Tone, tone is all in your fingers. <laughs> and that was demonstrated by the video with John Mayer playing the Epiphone Les Paul into like a Roland Q band. I never and watched that, sound, but oh my goodness. It still sounds like John Mayer. It sounds just like John Mayer. He was doing gravity with these kids at like a pool party. Like he's literally playing beside a pool at a pool party. It's phenomenal. A good guy, John Mayer. Good guy, okay, John Mayer. Well, so, well <laughs> he is not a good guy. I was going to throw that out there. <laughs> All right, we so what not. is this thing made of if it is so... Wood. Okay, it's full hollow. Okay, yes. spruce top, mahogany. Uh, I guess that math works out right. I don't know. Ooh. Normal guitar work, uh, way. This Seven, website pounds. has a Vox for $200. Um, calm down. <laughs> calm, calm it down. I don't know. I don't know how I feel about this because I'm not like a PRS fanboy anymore. So I think it's cool. It's, I think it's I think it's yeah. showing off at its best. That's yeah. the thing. Like people don't realize like a lot of these guitars, they got thirteen thousand dollar price point. It's literally it's it's Paul showing off how fantastic like his builders are. Oh yeah. Like they don't I, I think the stuff. only PRS I would buy is maybe a dragon. If I ever got, I had that much money just laying around. If I had that would like be it, <laughs> I don't know. I want. I don't know what I want. I'd want a single cut from PRS. I don't know. I want. I want the guitar. I want the uh, McCarty semi hollow that uh, Mike uses in Incubus, which he moved out inoperately. Uh, music man, but still. All right, that's the last of our gear news. Yep. Let's go on um, list. It's list time. Got time right, for one or two lists. All right. Um. So let's do. It says it, everything says top ten. I don't know if we're gonna do top ten. I think we just list our top ones. We'll just discuss it as we go. <laughs> top, top ones. Top. Well, not top one. Like is in singular. I'm like top top favorites. Uh, favorite solos of all time. Okay, uh, and 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 explain why. So I'm gonna list two really quick that fall under the same category of they were solos I learned early on that were kind of pop punk. Okay, and that's fair. I was and they were they were challenging, but they're one of those they're those solos that sound harder than they actually are. Mm -hmm. Um, that would be the solo to In Too Deep by Some Forty One. 
Okay. And the solo to the middle by Jimmy Eat World. Those are two of my favorite solos. I, I and I think like mine always translate into playing as well. Um, some of my favorite solos to listen to is also uh, Blackbird by Alter Bridge. Uh, that has some of the best dueling guitar solos. Uh, it has Mark Tremonti and Miles Kennedy soloing on it. Absolutely fantastic. If you do not have it, if you haven't listened to that song yet, you should check it out. It, is, it has some, one of the greatest solos of all time. Okay. Well, um... it, I mean, it, it's kind of like the Hotel California of all alternative oh, new metal interesting. stuff but yeah oh yeah it's it's like it, it's it's a masterpiece <laughs> i think guitar world listed it like right under or right above hotel california on top dueling guitar solos oh wow but it's a day what's a, what's some of your favorite solos uh the first one and maybe the only one that immediately comes to mind is um Stupid Boy by Keith Urban. Um, that's one I've never actually sat down to learn, but it, it's dynamic-ish in the way of, you know, he, he typically plays, a, at least in that era, he typically played a Les Paul Jr. for everything. So one pickup, he was able to, you know, pull off at least two or three different tones. Um, that's just one I've never sat down to learn right. but it's always been one of my favorites um i don't know just to piss somebody off stairway to heaven there we go <laughs> um ooh, ooh, another one of mine uh you shook me all night long by acdc that's one of my favorites to play because it is iconic in the sense of everyone like when you hear it uh when you like you know that's the right sound you know what i mean you like you can tell mm -hmm. when someone plays that solo opposite of the recording because that song has just been around for so long um and and i feel like there's a lot of those like even whenever you see bands live mm -hmm. uh if they don't play the solo right if it's a, such a lot like it's such an amazing was... album that's been heard so many times when they change the solo up live you're kind of like ah you messed up you know yeah actually going back to stairway to heaven i have seen a couple of uh tribute bands that you, you know, like you said, if you just if you do it wrong, or even just somebody doing a cover online, like right. I've just I've stopped the video right there. It's like okay, this is all all nice up up to this point, and then you get like five notes to the solo, and it's all changed. It's like nope, moving on. Ooh, okay, all right. So I've that's got, like the perfect example for that. I feel like I've found. I think this is probably top like five, if not my favorite solo of all time. Would have to be uh, "Limelight" by Rush because of the way that Alex Lifeson uses uh, the whammy bar, because he played that on a Strat, and he actually used the, well, the tremolo bar a lot. Um, I, I think I've told the story before. Whenever I went, um, my ex and I, we went and saw Rush, and I constantly look at the set list to see and in like half the shows they didn't put limelight on the set list and i was like oh my gosh i was gonna be so disappointed and when that song came on i screamed like a little girl <laughs> i'm talking about full, story before yes yeah, so i'm talking about full arms flailing freaking the frick out <laughs> like like you would have thought that like alex lifeson asked me to come play the guitar and i knew how to play the song perfectly like 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 i was just so excited i mean by far one of the best moments of all time was that uh let's let's do you have any more solos like that you want to mention uh, my mind is like blanking on it all right so. um top intros favorite favorite intros uh ooh, my own worst enemy by lit just that octave um the that's like i mean i intros i like intros that are iconic like you hear it um Ooh, I've got an intro that's not even guitar. It's not even like a rock instrument. Uh, Hell's Bells by ACDC. You hear that bell and that tone, you know what's about to happen. That's a fantastic intro. Uh, the live intro of Vertigo from U2. Like the, uh, he uses the uh, Death by Audio fuzz gun. Oh, okay. And he does like a siren sound with it. Oh, okay. Yeah. 
Like that's a uh, that's literally the only reason why I want to buy that pedal. Like I have no other yeah. use for it. I have no other need for it except to do that. <laughs> um, would you say Eruption is one of the greatest intros of all time? Into mm. you really got me. Granted, it, it is its own song, but it is an introduction. Like they go together. Yeah. Um. Yeah. I, I mean, that's almost one of those that or even ends ooh. up on the list. Yeah. Or the siren at the intro to running with the devil and the bass. I love, I love intros that as soon as you hear it, you just, you know, oh, what's the Van Halen song that they make it sound like a uh, motorcycle. Uh, you're thinking of Molly crew and that's girls. Okay, girls, sorry. girls. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why I thought it was that, but yeah. The... Well, they also have like the rumble. No, that's not girls. Girls. Drums. Drums. That's kickstart my heart. Sorry, not girls, okay. girls, girls. Gotcha. Whoops. But uh, Blink One Eighty Two kind of uses the same. Um, I think it is octaves. I have to go back and look at it. But I think Wildfire uses it. No Future uses it. Uh, and I don't know if it's supposed to be a theme through that album because I think they're all on the California record. But it's a pretty simple like dun 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 like that kind of thing. I don't know. I don't listen. Yeah, that it, album doesn't exist to me. <laughs> Any anything after self titled, I refuse to listen to. I'm sorry. I'll be honest with you. The new guy, his his playing is growing on me more. Like I like mm. Tom more. His playing more for um, mm. Angels and Airwaves. Yeah, uh, Angels and Airwaves sucks. So whatever. Um, <laughs> listen. I have a special hatred in my heart for pretty much anything that is not Blink-22 but includes Blink-22 members besides Plus 44. Because Plus 44 was just the response to Tom leaving Blink-182. Really? Yes. Okay. So so Tom... Apparently he hates it too. Yeah, that's what I did. Yeah, screw you, Tom. <laughs> All right, so... Uh, Kylo, shut up. He's been like barking at everyone lately. Um, but anywho. Get off my lawn. Get, pretty much. This girl was just taking her trash out. That's all. Um, anywho. Uh what? shut dude. All right. Yeah, no, anything after uh so like they did self-titled, and at that point, um Tom was already dabbling with Angels and Airwaves and everything, and then finally mm -hmm. Finally, Angels and Airwaves like caught on, like everyone's like, Oh, you're gonna do that. And he just like that's when he was like, Yeah, quit the band. And so Mark and Travis decided to start Ble plus 44 instead of continuing with Blink-22. And then they did the reunion. They got together. They did neighborhoods and all that. And then like Tom quit the band again, or, or I don't think they asked him to leave. Tom quit the band again. And then they're just like, screw it. We're not, we're going to like plus 44 sucked. Uh, it didn't really suck, but like, it wasn't great. Um, it was a mediocre album. Yeah. I've never really made it through. Yeah, I saw them live. I thought it was fantastic, but uh, it's definitely the album is very uh, bland, in my opinion. But any, yeah, anyways, uh, I don't want to talk crap about it. Um, yeah, no, anything after that, I don't like. But if you're going to do Blink 22 intros, uh, what's my age again? Yeah. My, uh, that's, that's very solid. Right um back in black intro just simple hi-hat oh wait wait hold on, hold on i know i'm just sticking with acdc that's kind of theme right now thunderstruck the intro yeah is you like, can't not mention that thunderstruck the intro is like a sports anthem not even the whole song all it takes is the intro to like kick in and it's not even all you hear is the t -t 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 i mean Ah, uh, the Chicago Bulls theme song. What is that? Oh my gosh! Um, <laughs> uh, uh, well, oh, if we're gonna, we need to go to all like genres of music. Favorite intro? Uh, Pony by Genuine. Wow! 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 Sorry. Ah. <laughs> uh, yeah. Serious. Yeah. That's it. Um, all right. Okay, uh, hey, just so somebody can get their uh, check mark, I think is. Um, where the streets have no name you're welcome that is There's a... your bingo card <laughs> yeah i actually 
I don't know. I thought I like Sunday Bloody Sunday intro. I think that's a great one. Yeah, um, that and what's another one that sticks out to me? 40. Um, I guess I can kind of lead us into the next one is like bass solos. Um, no, we didn't really do pop solo, punk. solo, but pop uh, punk anthems. We can, yeah, let's make that this one This is last the one. anthem. Throw all your hands up. Sorry. Yeah, okay. So which pop punk anthem is better? You have Anthem by Blink-182, the Anthem, anthem Part two, 2 by Blink-182, and then was the... Uh, is it this is the anthem or is it also no it is just anthem by uh good charlotte i think am i am i right Mm. was yeah it is so which out of those three are the best anthems for anthem 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 part two by (laughs) far yeah uh but i i'm trying to think of like some other great pop punk anthems um what was uh all what was it was off all killer no filler by some 41 it was the da, 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 da. Uh, the my best friends over you yeah no i don't want to waste my time become another casualty of society never fall in line that's that oh, was always fat a, lip. is it fat lip? yeah that's it yeah fat okay lip. yeah fat lip was always a good one um let's see green day I had plenty american idiot yeah like that that was a fan like honestly it was really weird so when that song came out i was my lean more conservative and i hated that song yeah i did too like i, d- I found it how funny like this was what we're 20 no 15 years later oh from that no it's gotta be long. <laughs> it's gotta be longer than that it's got- i wanted to no, say 20 it, no. but it's like it was not no it is close it was because it was right around 9 11 uh, you're right it's been almost 20 years. Oh, I'd say almost 20 years. It happened after 9 11. It was critical of Bush. Studio so it probably album, 17 years ago, I'd say. 17. Yeah, I told 17. you. I told you. <laughs> it can now watch dirty movies. Some of them. <laughs> some, some of them. It can... not, not, the full, not, the, not the full dirty ones, just the kind of dirty ones. Um... Let's, oh my gosh. Uh, yeah. Oh, oh, oh. Pop Punk Anthem. You just liked the video of it, uh, Black Parade by. Yeah, Mike so McCullough. that's what I was looking for. I was like, how is this not like? Wh- why is this not was, my name? Oh yeah. Or uh, uh, teenagers. Damn it. Yes, teenagers. Uh, damn it, by Blink One Eighty Two. Yeah. Um. Uh, oh, what was the? Uh. uh you you got to keep. Th- uh. Well, Three Days Grace probably falls a little more under alternative than pop punk. Oh um, yeah. I'm trying to think, like oh, Newfound Glory. What what did they do? They had to have done something. Sorry, I'm trying to distract Kylo so he'll stop whining like a little baby. Yeah, you're a baby. Oh yeah, they're my friends over you. Yes, that is a good one too. Yeah. Oh ooh, uh 1985 bowling for soup? Yes, we cannot forget. Or um oh, uh uh Move Along by All American Rejects. Rejects. Um even then you've got uh same thing. Uh, swing, swing by All American yeah, Rejects was a big gives one. You hell was a good one. Oh my that gosh, that's a, shoot. That was like going through my divorce recently. I was when I see my face. Yeah, brother. Ever. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, Jesus, listening to emo pop punk again. Like, <laughs> yeah. Oh, should uh, we mention Skater Boy? Oh, I mean, <laughs> does that count? Kind of. Kind of. Kind of. Okay, Not does shut- misery oh. business count more? I, no, no. No. God. I guess. Out of, out of those two, I, I think Paramore would probably have a little bit more of an anthem than... Yeah, but is Paramore really pop punk? They're kind of punky, but like... They're, they're Christian punk. There, I said it. Ew. <laughs> <laughs> it's made me a little nasty all right bass solos intros does anyone care yes people do Ooh. care uh <laughs> bass solo uh i'm gonna give some shout outs uh Stu ham uh the joe satriani dvd live in san francisco Stu ham does one of the most amazing bass solos of all time um victor wooten classical thump victor wooten uh, doing amazing grace with bella fleck and the fleck tones when he was on tour with them uh Let's see. Uh, Billy Sheehan's tone sounds like crap, but he does a lot of cool bass solos. Um, the intro 
to uh, higher ground with flea and red hot chili peppers. Um, the, uh, what is it? Uh, lateralist by the tool. Um, I have no idea. I don't listen to tool. All right. Well, that's the album. What's the song? Uh, schism. Gotcha. Is, I'm pretty sure. Hold on. We're going to get canceled real quick. Cause I want to make sure <laughs> that's don't. the right song. A pretty much well, almost any tool uh, the pot by tool. I absolutely love I that. Let's see. Yeah. All right. That was just enough before we get taken down off YouTube. Yeah. Schism by tool. Um, oh. So for me, we've got a long view. Yes. Green day. Um, if I want to count like just bass lines and Carousel general, by Blink 182. Yes. Carousel by Blink 182 is by far the best pop punk bass solo intro of all time. And yeah, I think there's a I feel like there's a lot of like Blink and Green Day. Like they're the ones that they're gonna pop really out really stuck out as because Tom and Mike were like very prominent bass players in the pop punk world. Um also if if for Green Day, I'm gonna pick She yes that is definitely. the best the best bass tone ever that's literally what i try to like aim for but i've just not really done my research or anything yeah. to like try to reproduce it but yes <laughs> yeah i gotta i definitely gotta go with that song she is probably my favorite and something i've learned recently uh mark does a lot more like power chords and movement oh, yeah. than you would suspect on bass yeah oh yeah i know well mark doesn't he doesn't do the full power chord he does the one in the five yeah like, like that that kind of shape um yeah, yeah for think... well that, that helped thicken out the stuff especially whenever uh like tom would be doing lead lines and they were still just i mean they're just a three piece mm -hmm. and they never really brought other musicians on to fill out the sound yeah and ugh. I've watched some stuff of them live and I, that, that's something that I will say that is a good difference between like Tom and the new guy, like Tom, Mark and um, Travis, Travis sound a whole lot better live than the new guy does with them. Well, I mean, and the thing is, Tom's voice is very unreliable live. It is, but it is. I, you don't know what you're going to get. You can get the one that sounds like the album or you can get the one that sounds like a douchey teenager. He's making fun of Tom DeLonge. Where are you? <laughs> and um, I'm so sorry. Like the, or you get like that one. It's like, and I'm so sorry. Like just that woman. But uh, shoot, I watched uh, the Blink-182 show from 2020. I think it was at the Music Awards, whatever Music Awards those were. Um, Billboard it was so awful. So, so yeah. awful. Like, go look it up. Like, it was hard to even... It was so much of a dumpster fire that, like, you just had to keep watching just to see if it got better. I'm like, interested to see how effed up Travis Barker's life is going to get. Because he's dating a Kardashian? Yep. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's going to get feel about crazy. That. Um, I feel like Travis Barker is old enough to be their dad. He has to be. I think he's pretty close in age with the one he's dating, isn't he? I don't. I. I would. I don't. I don't think so. Look it up. Okay, he Google is it. forty-five. Okay, and he looks rough, by the way. He does. He Gordon looks like he needs. Kardashian is forty-five. Forty-two. Is she really? Uh, yeah. Wow. Okay, never mind. But Travis looks a lot rough. He looks rough. He looks he like does. he hasn't slept in like since the self-titled uh, self-titled. Probably album. hasn't. Huh? He probably hasn't. Yeah. Cocaine's a hell of a drug. I'm just kidding. I don't know if he's on cocaine. All right. Well, that's enough speculation for this week. Um, <laughs> before we get a cease and desist from like Travis Barker's lawyer. Uh, 
Is there, Does Travis sign be... it? Because I will frame that. Yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh, that'd be fantastic. Yeah. Um, all right, well, thanks for joining us, guys. Once again, thank you to our uh, patrons who keep us motivated to keep doing this. Uh, no, I'm just kidding. They really don't. They're just a lot of fun to hang out with. Um, so if you want to hang out with us and be friends, you can uh, join. The, uh, Tom stays on our ass for late. Tom. Yeah. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I, was still still <laughs> I was still in Blink 182. I was still thinking Blink 182. I was like, yes, oh, Tom yeah. messages me every week when we're five minutes late, and I just have not told you that. I just want to. I just want to talk to Tom. That's great. All right, anywho, uh, let's keep moving. I keep saying anywho. I just noticed that as well, and I don't like that. But thanks for joining us, guys. You can go to you can go to the effectsleep.com. It'll have links to our Facebook group, our Instagram, our YouTube, our email, and our Patreon. If you don't want to go to that link, just go to patreoncom slash sleep and give us money. Uh, for the effects sleep, I'm Diaz, and I'm Chris, and we'll see you next week, guys. Bye. Bye.